Hello, Johanna. And, um, hello. Hello, and um, welcome um, to your conversation for The Crossing uh, today uh, with the New York Jewish Film Festival. And we are so excited and um, just really happy, pleased, um, and grateful for you to share this really beautiful, elegant film that reaches across all ages and really does I don't know, speaks sort of quietly and remarkably all at once. So um, thank you for that. And maybe with that, you can tell us a little bit about the film itself, um, just for our audience. You know, just what uh, it's all about. What and, it's all and, about. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a film from Norway uh, and it's set during the Second World War. Uh, and there are uh, a main character, and she's 10 years old. Her name is Gerda, and she has a, an older brother as well, and her resistance movement in, in Norway uh, against the Nazi regime. And uh, just before Christmas 1942, her parents get arrested, and, and the children uh, left by themselves in the house find two Jewish children hidden, hidden in a secret cupboard in the, in the cellar. And, uh, and the four children goes on a journey or they have to flee uh, and they have to flee to Sweden, which is a neutral country during the Second World War and to get there on their own. So it's, it's about these four children uh, and their journey and all the threats they meet along the way and also about friendship and loyalty. Yeah. And uh, yeah. yeah, it's basically a dramatic and... Um, yeah, I, I think uh, I'll stop there. <laughs> yeah. Right, sure, sure, sure. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. That's, a, that's, that's a great description for everyone. And, um, you know, as remarkable as it is, um, I understand that um, it took a while to get funding for this uh, film. Um, maybe you can speak about why, um, particularly because it's, as you mentioned, uh, one of the first films or the second film dealing with um, kids or from a kid's perspective, um, you know, about the, the World War Holocaust. Mm. So I'd assume it would have gotten funding faster, but you know, maybe you can think yeah. through that a little bit. Yes, in Norway, it's been made a lot of films about the Second World War because we are a small country and, and, uh, and we were occupied uh, in 1940 and uh, and there's made a, tons of movies about this period, but uh, very few of them has dealt with the Holocaust. Uh, it's uh, more like action-based, you know, hero stories with grown-ups in the in the main part uh, parts. Uh, so I think I or I remember when I was a little girl, I saw a film uh, called uh, Little Ida. It was about a girl. Uh, 10 years old maybe uh, and uh, it was told from a child's perspective um, it dealt with another issue but uh, nevertheless it really caught me uh, but it was for a grown-up audience so when Maya Lunde came with this project uh, I, I was really excited because as I mentioned for you earlier it it's never been made I think a film about the Second World War in Norway for children and I think part of that is that it's a difficult issue to to present yeah. for children and i think also that uh, there might be a certain resistance or uh, that that the consultants are a bit afraid of, of touching the theme as well of the seriousness and and also the cruelty i think yeah so yeah. i think that's part of why it took so long to to get the funding yeah and that, yeah yeah mm. yeah yeah that makes complete sense yeah it it's um it's so potent um th th that mm. even brings up so many more uh questions in my mind um i love uh, one thing really great about the film how you book and it at the beginning and the end with archival um yeah. footage even though we're in a fiction film um how important did you feel it was to, you know, deliver the time or the context of the time that way? 
I think that was really important because one of the main keys, I think, to this project was because it was a children's film, we had to kind of give it, Gerda is an, an adventurous uh, character. She has this great imagination and she, she kind of lives a bit in a fairy tale. Uh, and that was, in a way, the best way to tell this story, I think, in a way that was... Um, in a way, it, it it kind of softened it a bit to to kind of go to see it from the child's perspective in this manner. And because of that, I think it was also very important to to show that this is a true story in a way, and and the documentary footage does that I think, and also that, you know, it's a young generation. It's they don't know this much about the Second World War either, so. It's something to talk about uh, when they have seen the film, I think. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and um, these leads of yours, I mean, uh, you know, the, the ensemble was great. You know, just about everybody who was featured at some point. Um, Gerta, uh, Otto, the, 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 <laughs> the actors who played the Sarah and Danielle, they were, um, they were so, they were quite fantastic and so, believable in their roles that it's you know it's almost hard to feel that they were in fiction and um i would love to know about maybe your process of a um, little bit about your process bringing them into um this world of acting because my mm -hmm. understanding was not all of them were a few of them child actors prior or uh, none of them have had ever acted before so this was their fir first project but i think that's the amazing thing with children because they're they have so much access to their feelings and i think it's more about trying to find uh something recognizable in e every situation even if it's you know uh, a story that takes place 80 years ago you can always find something i think to to kind of connect to some feeling that they know and uh, and we also talked a lot about uh, the second world war and the holocaust and what was going on in norway at that time and uh, and they were really interested and they were also this group that helped each other because they liked each other so a big part uh -huh. of finding them was to find a group that actually worked together as well as uh, each on their own so uh yeah to find mm -hmm. a strong group mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah they they really sort of worked with each other in unison i mean yeah. from the ama from the fantastical scenes you know uh with them as you know just musketeers to the quiet scenes, um, there was a really sort of uh, great camaraderie. Um, I'm, I'm curious when you would share with them about, um, you know, the need for hiding and all of these, you know, uh, how many, um, you know, people were forced to escape, um, Jewish people were forced to escape and tit after and all of these different things. Um, was did you find that there was disappointment that they felt perhaps about humanity? You know, was it was was there a shock um, for them to know that you know the, the world that they're in, you know, even though it's shifted back and forth, had that much of a severe? Yeah, I know, think um, I think mm -hmm. they know parts of the history, uh, but I think that they're they gained a lot of consciousness about about uh, what actually happened during the filming and and especially afterwards when they were interviewed and uh, talked about their parts and I, I I saw that they had made a lot of uh, they had made a lot of reflections around everything so mm -hmm. uh, yeah I think it must have sunk in it and yeah but at the same time they're children and they right about? yeah you know yeah yeah <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But, yeah but you know, know yeah but i 
I know that the film has started a lot of good conversations with uh, between children and grown-ups after the okay. screening and that was part of our goal actually to to start a conversation about the second world war and about what happened here in Norway and in the world in general right yes yes mm. and 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 um while the children so the four children um I, I all Norwegian but um the two Jewish children um being um Sarah and Danielle um I what I really loved is that they all are heroines, heroes, heroines. Mm. They all they're they're victims and heroines of their own story. Um, oftentimes, you know, there's just the victim versus the hero. Um, was that something that you, uh, as a director, really sought out to balance? Do you feel like that was also part of the source material? Um, because I I did find it lovely and refreshing it wasn't just you know i don't know if i i i understood your question right but it was important for me to and maya the author to to uh for instance otto gerda's older brother in this in the beginning of the story he's kind of confused because his best friend his father, the father of his best friend, is a Nazi sympathizer, and uh, it's his only only friend, and and he's a bit confused what's right and what's wrong, uh, and he kind of he doesn't want to help them in the first place, and he's he's a bit coward. He's a coward in a way, and uh, and but in the end of the story, he's actually the one that that rescue rescue the, the whole group so he, he becomes the hero so his journey is quite big from kind of he doesn't want to help to 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 sacrifice yeah. himself actually or yeah putting, yeah putting himself in the line mm. yeah and and what i was saying is as well like mm. each of them have their moment of her with and yeah. da daniel has his and yeah, yeah. so that it sort of balances out in this sort of great way and um, especially now, so your lead with Goethe, this little girl with such like spunk and um, determination, yeah. and um, my God, her little cloak and sort of moving <laughs> forward. Can you yeah. talk about um, talk, perhaps the pleasure of having a young girl lead yes. who was such a firebrand? Maybe um, yeah. did you have a pleasure? And seeing that, or directing that, or working yes. with it, <laughs> of course, yeah. Uh, and and we come from in Scandinavia. We have a really, uh, we have Pippi Longstocking, and I, I'm sure you know <laughs> yeah. the character. And uh, we were really inspired by Astrid Ling Lindgren, the author of Pippi Longstocking's Universe. It, where she all she always makes fantastic. Uh, child characters and they're strong and they're um yeah um real characters and we wanted we wanted to we we were inspired by that actually yeah 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 awesome mm -hmm. uh, I, you know I, I was also wondering if um perhaps another inspiration just fairy tales in general the, um you know yeah we were i remember when we started talking about this movie and i was like oh have that Hans Christian Andersen. There's that the the moment of um, the kid discover that the place that they're seeking solace and comfort and food is you know an, is with a, an older woman Nazi, and um, it's such a terrifying. But it just uh, it just it builds like such a really s sweet and horrific fairy tale at once. Um, uh, I guess I'm just wondering if fairy tales were, in addition to Pippi Longstocking, were those part of your childhood? Were those things that you were uh, very yes. into? Yes, especially that scene was that that has a reference to Hans and Gretchen when they when they find the the, the candy house in the in the forest, uh, mm -hmm. and I, I think what we wanted to 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 do was to to kind of make this tell tell the story about uh, how difficult it was to know who to to trust 
because that's part of the story as well, isn't it? That mm -hmm. uh, your neighbor could could be could be mm -hmm. someone who tells on you, or and that was uh, that was the truth during the Second World War. You didn't know who to trust, and that made everything so scary in a way. And uh, mm -hmm. in our story, it's an old lady, and she seems really nice. And she's mm. not. <laughs> not right and I, I know that children find that scene the most scary, actually, because there's someone who, who turns out to be something else than she seems. And yeah. 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 Mm. She goes from like gingerbread cookies to. Yeah. Furnace, you know? yeah. 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 So, um, yeah. So that was really well done and um, visually well done. I guess um, perhaps. Speaking of which, I'll just give you, give some time to your um, production team. Um, you know, working with your cinematographer. Yeah. Um, how was uh, shooting children? You know, um, so you're shooting at a lower. Yeah. I guess focal point. Um, maybe if you can speak about that and all the running in the forest and yeah. you know all of that in the snow <laughs> yes because it's a low budget film and and we wanted to to be with the children all the way we wanted to be with them in their movements and and we also wanted to be in their perspective all the way and in the eye height of the children as well so uh, Jon Erling Holmnes Fredriksen is the name of the cinematographer and mm -hmm. he is really good at handling this gimbal rig which is a mechanic device that allows you to it's almost like a steady cam but you you mm -hmm. you, can, you can run with it you don't need to put dolly tracks out in the forest and we didn't have any time to do that either so for us it made everything a lot easier to have the rig and um so he, and he's amazing. I mean, he can do anything with that rig. <laughs> Run in deep snow and, you know, uh, uh, <laughs> amazing what he actually uh, pulled off. Uh, yeah, <laughs> pulled off. And, and we also shot it during the darkest time in, uh, in winter. Wow. So we had like six hours of daylight every day. And we didn't have money to, to light every, anything outside. So everything is uh, done with natural lighting so um so we worked really efficient oh, yes. we had to yeah 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 the well, last was... minutes of the day everyone ran <laughs> like <laughs> it was crazy <laughs> yeah a lot of adrenaline right Energy yes a lot of adrenaline. <laughs> and the kids you know they kind of came in to this regime as well so oh it's 30 minutes left of the day we have to run <laughs> <laughs> so i was really right. amazed by them actually and how they pulled it off as well oh Kids. great great yeah great yeah and um another remarkable thing between the well you know i know i spoke about the house um you know with the uh production design but the costumes um they were oh my gosh everybody is so individual in their costumes um did you collaborate with your costume designer on that or did you know how did how did that process work or did they he or she arrive with those or did the yes, kids we inspire talked, uh, it or? we talked a lot about the characters and and uh especially daniel and sarah where did they come from and we found that that their father he's a tailor so we wanted him to be we wanted them to be tailored in a way even though yeah they're they very didn't, yeah and uh, even if if they're quite poor their clothes are really tailored so uh, and uh, garda we wanted her cloak to be blue because it just felt right that she had this <laughs> sky blue cloak uh, but at the same time she's kind of a tomboy uh, and uh yeah and, and otto is the strict and scared type so he's kind of buttoned and you know like this old man almost little old yeah. man yeah yeah so yeah so we worked on the characters and how we wanted them to we wanted to tell about them each 
each of them with mm -hmm. the clothes. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, and the production designer was Sa Nilsson and, and uh, Anne Isen, the costume designer, also worked very close. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm. With it, yeah, yeah. And then, uh, and then, right, and then it transforms into their, well, not to, you know, their special scene, their special musketeer scene. <laughs> Um, yeah, and yeah, that was yeah. lovely to do that. Yeah. To to get them to to give them those costumes, they loved it. You know. Too. Yeah. Yes. Mm. I I can well I can well imagine. Um, <laughs> I, yeah, it's it's such it's a, it's such a beautiful, you know, um, scene to just uh, think with this whole film. I mean, I'm wondering, did had you met any um, were, had you met anybody who had um been able to make it to sweden from norway any um you know i know that the movie was dedicated maybe you can maybe i'll mm. let you say that mm. who the movie was dedicated to and i'm wondering yeah. if you met any of those people along the way of uh producing making this film actually i haven't met anyone saw a lot of interviews the jewish museum has made documentaries uh, a documentary where they have interviewed a lot of those who uh, had to escape uh, and uh, had to flee so uh, I learned a lot from that and also we had we had like uh, a holocaust museum where we had like a specially designed uh, lecture for the kids where we learned a lot and um, there aren't many left either there are some, but uh, in in uh, Norway in 1942, it was approximately 2,000, 2,100 Jews in Norway at at the time, and uh, and uh, around 1,200 managed to escape to Sweden. So we dedicated dedicated to all of those who had to flee, and all of those mm. who helped them, but also. All of them who didn't come back, and that was 773 of the 2,100 Jews that lived in Norway at the time. Oh, that wow. was uh, deported to to uh, Auschwitz. Yeah. Wow! Wow! Yeah. But what's the um? Has, is there a small uh, Jewish community there now who may have um engaged with the film um in any way? And I'm just wondering what that was like for them, or if you heard any feedback or any sort of reception? I have gotten a lot of feedback and, um, and I think uh, what is the main uh, feedback is that it's so good that there's made a film for children about this because uh, I know that a lot of teachers find it hard to, to introduce the theme to, mm -hmm. to pupils. And this is a way of them to, to start a conversation and to... Um... I got a message yesterday, yesterday that was really touching and that was from uh, a family that had a kid in foster care mm -hmm. and he talks a lot about Hitler and he's a Trump mm. sympathizer and uh, has a lot of ideas about uh, yeah and and they showed him the film and he asked questions mm. like why do the Norwegian kids uh, help the Jewish kids and mm. and they and they said it was really good to show it to him to to, to talk about all the crazy ideas he has in his head now <laughs> yeah, yeah. and uh, yeah but I haven't gotten feedback i I think from from the Jewish society especially I just mm -hmm. know that um, a lot You've of people like that mm -hmm. yeah 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 mm -hmm. yeah that's really that's really great the, um, that it would have inspired questions from that um, kid that you're speaking yeah. about, you know, um, that would inspire him to wonder because I thought that that was the great thing is that the, the, the film sort of goes into their perspective, which is, 
just yeah. sort of trying to figure out like why and how are we agents in this messy like yeah. thing you know this this mess that the adults yeah. have made um and um and I, I you know and there's this great part of the movie where you know Gerda it says I think something like you know it's not our fault or it's the you know it's not it's we're, we're just children you know um but I do think that the speaking through kids just does give the opportunity of seeing like these really big tricky issues of going either way you know yes, and yes. i and i think you also did that so s smartly with the um the um younger nazi officer um mm. who sort of you see sort of this person on the fence and you sort of wish that there were interventions <laughs> Uh, you know, coming in the way of people who are who are doing things not because um, they are as conscious as they need to be while they're doing this. They're huh. more they're more following. You yeah. Know. So um, yeah, I guess just to have to applaud you for that and 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 the screenwriter. You know. Yeah, and the screen. Yeah, my Ellen. The that's my Ellen. This uh, doing and and I think. Uh, the thing with the young German soldier is all, also that a lot of young boys didn't have a choice really. They were sent to a foreign country to, to uh, <laughs> they didn't have a choice and, and uh, a lot of them hated what they had to do. And uh, I think that's important as well to, to tell. And I think that it, it, isn't, it isn't always black and white that it's gray zones and uh, that it's also, it, it matters what you choose, even as a child, it matters to make a stand. And uh, yeah. That's right, across all ages. That's really great. Yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. What this, that's, that's what this shows. Well, um, can you share with us some special honors that this film has received or, or, things, oh. that you've been, or things you've been proud about that this film is I think what I'm most proud about is is that all the feedback is about the good conversation between children and grown-ups uh, after the screenings and uh, I'm really about that actually because uh, that that was what we really wanted uh, to, to start a conversation because it's also I think very uh, it can be transferred to our time today as well. With uh, there's never been as many refugees mm -hmm. as it, it's it's uh, more refugees today than it was during the Second World War, and mm. half of them are children. So it's still a big uh, issue, I think, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. it can be transferred to our time as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it has a lot of definitely a lot of relevance um, to. I'm so and glad it's you brought ice that cold, up. And, and I think it's an ice cold climate now. Uh, politi I, I mean, it's so easy to to be uh, delusion. I mean, just today, mm -hmm. with what happened in in the U.S. with with the with the Trump conversation, it's uh, mm -hmm. it's scary times, and we need to. Uh, we need to uh, uh, believe in the good, I think, and to be uh, and and to be human. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I I, I will say this. Um, I watched when we were first screening these films. It was for me during the election run-up time, and I yeah. found this. Um, I found the film helpful uh, for my soul. So yeah, good. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And, and 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 also just really appreciating and being real that there is a real range out there and how little things um starting from like you know terrible stereotyping to myths to fright to all like the aggregate of it all what it can build into you know yeah. is some is something completely you know destructive and i yes. feel like this um 
this film is starting to show you what those things will build into, you know, so you, you get a chance to reflect and, you know, switch your action, switch your actions, you know, or try to be more thoughtful, you know, so there, yeah, there's, to um, be aware, mm. aware. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So that's, um, that's, that's quite something special. Well, um, can you, uh, share any, um, plans that you either have with, uh, the film in addition to playing at the New York Jewish Film Festival, <laughs> um, um, uh, you know, additional, additional places that it may play and, or um, mm. you can feel free to speak about any other uh, another project you might be working on. Uh, right now, I'm just I'm reading scripts and I'm also developing a project, and that's a totally different story. But um, I think uh, for me, it's a passion to make films for children, but to take children serious, uh, to, to tell story, proper stories for kids. I mean, take kids seriously. And, and uh, I would love to do more of that, actually. Uh, I think children deserve good films. Uh, and there are a lot of good children movies, but I wish there were more films that uh, dealt with, you know, difficult themes um also politically and you know uh with solidarity and yeah i actually uh, I, that's my passion uh, at the moment and uh what more film isn't screened in many theater these days because of the covid situation but it's been oh yeah uh, mm -hmm. it's been uh, distributed to a lot of countries and it's been uh, nominated for the European Children's Film uh, Award, so that's uh, that's exciting. So I'm just uh, wow. I'm, I just hope that it will be seen <laughs> by people, <laughs> even if uh, uh, people don't go to the cinema right yeah. now. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, I, I'm i sure, at least through our audience, for sure, there'll be, um, <laughs> there'll be plenty seeing it. And um, yeah, I was just thinking of like, how suspenseful, it just, it really is a movie that you blink and suddenly you're, you know, you're at the, you're at the end, you're just, you're, you're just in the journey, everything. And, and this time you're being taken through this journey through children. So it just is such a special thing and uh, so, so important, um, the, the work. So just congratulations. Oh, just, again. Thank you. <laughs> yes. And um, <laughs> thank you for joining us and wishing you the best with it. And, thank you um, and uh, good luck with your festival. Uh, I think it's amazing that you, you uh, get the films out there during these times. It's uh, I hope I hope you will have uh, an audience, even though everything is digital. I, I guess it is. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, yeah. listen. Though I think for sure, January it's cold. We're all still in yeah. lockdown. Everything. It's a really great time to have this um, a be part a of festival. our slate. And yeah. yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So. Yeah. So. Uh, so I think people will definitely be taking it in with their. Wait, I'm trying to pronounce it as cacao. Cacao. Yeah, cacao. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. yeah. Oh wow! Yes. Yeah. So, all right. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. All right, and um, okay. yes, the best of luck with everything. Great. Thank you. Same to you. Bye bye. Bye bye. <laughs>